With the computer market starting to return back to normal, a lot of people are going to be buying new PCs, either building their own, buying something pre-built, or even getting a laptop. So today we're going to go over some things that you should do after getting your new computer, whichever route that you decided to take. So first things first, if it's a desktop PC, either one that you built or a pre-built, I highly suggest you head into your BIOS and check out a few options. Now I did a video on this, if you want to go ahead and check it out, it's super informative and it's mainly about checking your fan curves and your XMP profile. Now second step is one of the most important steps possible and that's uninstalling McAfee or any other antivirus that is pre-installed on your system. Most of these are absolute garbage and I highly suggest you get rid of them. Windows Defender does a great job and as long as you are navigating the net safely you can use something like Malwarebytes to check for anything you know once a week um, and you don't really need to have a live third-party antivirus anymore. It's up to you though. Take a look at the options that are out there. I personally don't use any of them anymore. I only use Malwarebytes. I have it run once a week and I use Windows Defender. Now next up is actually going to be Windows Update. Even though it's a brand new computer, sometimes it's going to require you to do a few updates. Windows Update also downloads drivers. So even if your Windows install was the newest version of that, Windows Update is going to download a bunch of those drivers for you. So go ahead and head to the Windows Update section. You can just type update in your search bar. It'll go ahead and get any updates that you need. Now, speaking about drivers, getting the most up-to-date graphics driver for your system is super important to ensure that your graphics card is running at its best potential. So go ahead and head to your manufacturer's website, either AMD, NVIDIA, or even Intel, and download your driver there and get it installed. Now, other drivers can also be required, so you can go ahead and head to your motherboard's manufacturer's website, go to the support section, go to downloads, and they'll usually have a bunch of drivers there available for you. Windows will try to install as many of those as possible, but if you do want to be super thorough, you can download them all yourself, install them, and then Windows will go ahead and update any of them if they need to be updated. Now, the next step I'm going to recommend is actually uninstalling bloatware. Now, one of the tools I'm going to mention later is going to help you with this, but if you want to do it yourself, just go ahead and go to Add or Remove Programs within Windows, and just go ahead and start uninstalling all of the stuff that's pre-installed. Now, Windows has gotten a little bit bad with this lately. They pre-install a bunch of apps and some, you know, pretty low-tier games on there. So go ahead and uninstall those. It just clears up space and kind of gets rid of all that extra bloat. Now, the next step is actually going to be to change your power plan. Now, if you're on Windows 10 or Windows 11, this is the same screen for both. Just go ahead and type power plan into your settings. You're going to get a couple of screens. Now, if you're on the power option screen, you're going to see balanced and power saver. And then usually high power is available if you press a little arrow. If you're going to be playing games, just keep it on high power. Um, if you're only using your computer for just browsing the net, then balance is perfectly fine. And if you want to save on battery life, if you're using a laptop, power saver can be pretty helpful. Now you can go ahead and click the change plan settings within that, and you'll be able to alter um, when the display turns off, um, you know, with an activity, and when the computer goes to sleep. Now if you go ahead and hit what the power buttons do, you can actually go ahead and change what your power button does. So if you click it, it'll put it to sleep or it'll shut it down. And another setting to change here is actually the turn on fast startup. I typically recommend disabling this. What fast startup does is it basically caches your system so that when you turn it off, it's not actually turning off. It's putting itself into a kind of hybrid sleep state. Um, and when you are experiencing difficulties, you have to use restart in order to fully you know, restart all your drivers and everything, which can be a little bit of a hassle. If you have an SSD in your system, fast startup really doesn't benefit you all that much anyways, unless you like having your Chrome browser automatically pop up with whatever you had open. I typically recommend disabling that option. Now, something else that you can do is go ahead and rename your PC if you end up using a lot of file sharing within your network, and it just helps you kind of identify what's actually using your Wi-Fi and things like that. And if you want to connect to your computer via Bluetooth as well, you can go ahead and head to the 
about my PC section of Windows 10 or 11, and there is a rename my PC button. Now, another super important one is checking your refresh rate. If you have a monitor that has a refresh rate above 60, you'll want to make sure that your monitor is actually being run at that higher refresh rate. So go ahead and head to your display settings and then go to advanced display settings and the refresh rate there, you can change it immediately. And the last settings item that I usually like recommending is disabling uh, enhanced pointer precision. What this does is it kind of changes the speed of the mouse depending on how fast you're moving your mouse and over time. And it is atrocious, especially if you play FPS games. So make sure you disable this one. If you're using a trackpad, it can be a little bit helpful, but other than that, it's not very good. Now, in terms of programs, I've mentioned these before. A lot of these I've mentioned in my free programs video, but Ninite is an incredible tool when having a fresh PC. It allows you to install a bunch of programs that you would want to install on a new computer. Things like your browsers, um, you know, Spotify, Steam, a bunch of programming tools if you wanna use that. There's a wide variety of things here, but what this allows you to do is you basically just select them from a list you download the installer and it'll install all of them to default locations for you, which is super handy tool. Now, another awesome tool that I really like to use and I recommend to everybody installing Windows 10 or Windows 11 is ONO Shut Up 10, which works for both 10 and 11. Windows 10 and 11 have a lot of functions that do impede on your privacy. So this helps you kind of clean all those up, turn all those settings off without having to dive into a bunch of different menus. It does it in a very simple way with just little toggles on and off and you can actually use a singular button to do all of the recommended ones all of the recommended and somewhat recommended ones or just replying all of them it also allows you to create a system restore point if you want to be safe and it allows you to undo all of the changes that you've made and re restore to factory settings another piece of software that i use all the time is hw info hw info is great in order to monitor your system performance whether that's temperatures fan speeds, your CPU speeds. Um, it's a really great tool. It's nice to have in the background. It has very little overhead. And I highly suggest it for anyone who's a little bit more of a tweaker or likes to have a little bit more information about their actual computer. And if you have Windows 11, there are two pieces of software that are actually pretty awesome, especially if you've come from Windows 10. The first one is called This Is Win 11. What it does is it allows you to change a lot of the settings within Windows 11 in order to make it feel a lot more like Windows 10. Um, it has a bunch of tweaks, a bunch of changes. It helps you set up and customize Windows 11 a little bit more. The second one is called Love Windows Again, which is built by the same person who made This Is Win 11, but it's a little bit more simple and doesn't have as many things that it changes within Windows 11. It's more the visual changes and just kind of getting things back to what you felt like in Windows 10. And my final suggestion for when you're doing a new computer is to create a system restore point or a backup. So once you're done doing all of these things, go ahead and set up a system restore. So if you just search system restore in your uh, start menu, it'll go up and pop up. You can go ahead and easily set up a system restore. What this does is if something happens where your computer and Windows ends up getting corrupted, you can end up restoring Windows from that backup It'll have all the settings and all the things that you have changed and it just helps you have a greater starting point if you do run into a major issue and windows file history is a built-in tool that helps you do backups so if you want to keep you know certain things backed up in case of an issue uh, or in case a drive fails you can go ahead and set up the backup tool um, i always suggest having some kind of backup so with important data i usually suggest the 321 rule which is having three copies of your data your primary and two copies of it two is having your stuff saved on two different types of media so a hard drive and maybe an ssd somewhere and then the one rule is having at least one of those backups off-site now this is not something that most people are going to need but if you do have important data it's highly suggested and that backup off-site can be something like a cloud storage. But if you don't have that important data, maybe it's just photos and videos that you would be upset if you lost them, but it wouldn't be you know, a career ending move. You can just get something like an external portable hard drive, uh, an external desktop hard drive, or create your own little NAS setup inside your house. And that's it. These are all of my recommendations on what to do when getting a new computer. 
Again, whether that's you've built your own computer desktop, you've bought a pre-built, or you've got a laptop. The nice thing about a lot of these is that you can do a majority of this within maybe about an hour, and then you're all set up and ready to go for the future of using your computer. Now, I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, I'd really appreciate it if you like, subscribed. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below, and I'll try to get them all as quickly as possible. Big thanks to my patron sponsors, Thought Slime, Step Back, and Rojo Son of Dojo, and thank you for watching the end of this video. If you want to check out a bunch of other software that I highly suggest for a computer, especially ones that are free, go ahead and check out this video right here. And as always, stay safe out there. I'll see you next Friday.